burns are the second leading cause of injury in children 1 to 4 years of age, with about 10% resulting from abuse. Burns are caused by thermal, chemical, electrical, or radioactive agents. The extent and seriousness of a burn depends on the type of burning agent, the duration of the exposure or contact with the agent, and the site of the injury. Children who have severe burns undergo prolonged, painful, and restrictive hospitalizations. Risk factors for burns in children include water heaters with temperature set too high, access to very hot liquids such as coffee or soup, room heaters with pans of water on or near them to provide humidity, access to stove tops or electrical appliances, unguarded bathroom faucets, young children left unattended in bathtubs or showers, cooking without adult supervision, playing with fire, lighters, or matches, child abuse, and children in homes without working smoke detectors. Severe burn injuries result in rapid fluid and electrolyte shifts, specifically in the first 24 hours. These shifts put the burn child at risk for hypovolemia, hypoproteinemia, hyponatremia, and hyperkalemia. Because of the high risk for hypovolemia, obtaining intravenous access is a priority once the airway has been established. The type of fluid used for burn children is controversial and varies with the provider and the child's perceived needs. The Parkland formula for fluid replacement is appropriate for children. The child receives 4 milliliters of fluid per kilogram of body weight times percentage of the body surface area burned. The general guideline is to run fluids to maintain a urinary output of 30 milliliters per hour in older children and an output of 1 to 2 milliliters per kilogram per hour in children who weigh less than 30 kilograms. You would also monitor the child's vital signs, capillary refill, and level of consciousness to determine fluid and electrolyte status and the need for more or less fluids. Following insertion of the IV, you'd administer pain medications immediately to reduce the child's pain. Remember, it is easier to control pain if medication is given proactively. Diagnostic tests for the burned child include a good history and physical assessment, arterial blood gases, CBC, electrolytes, serum glucose, BUN, creatinine, serum protein levels, blood type and cross match, and a chest x-ray. The test ordered will vary with the severity, extent, and area of the burn and the causative agent. The rule of nines can be used for older children to assess the body surface area involved, but it can be misleading when used for infants. A specially designed age-related burn assessment tool is a better choice, especially for infants and younger children. In treating a child who has burns, first stop the burning process, then assess, establish, and maintain airway, breathing, and circulation, establish intravenous access, administer fluids, provide pain management, and provide adequate nutrition. There are many possible complications from burns in children. Your care will focus on preventing or minimizing those complications. They include fluid and electrolyte imbalance, respiratory injury secondary to inhalation of smoke or carbon monoxide, pulmonary edema, infection, pneumonia, stress ulcers, contractures, deformities, mucosal erosion resulting in gastrointestinal bleeding, anemia due to cell destruction and hemolysis, metabolic acidosis, scarring, body image changes, shock, third spacing, sleep disturbances, altered growth and development, altered family processes, caregiver role strain, activity intolerance, and impaired mobility. Special considerations for children who have been burned involve family counseling and teaching. Parents, siblings, or other caregivers may have feelings of guilt that must be addressed. The family will need care instructions. You'll verify access to health care and availability of funds and supplies to provide the long-term care necessary for children who have severe burns. Referrals may be necessary and can be made through community services, the American Burn Association, the National Safety Council, and the Shriners Burn Institutes. Finally, you teach home safety.